reading, um, we'll turn our Bibles to the book of John, chapter 3, verses 16. John, chapter 3, verse 16. We'll read two texts before we pray. John 3, verse 16, it reads as follows. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I repeat it again, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The next text that we'll read is found in the book of Malachi, chapter 3. We'll read from verse 10 to verse 12. It reads as follows, Bring all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will, be not, there will not be room enough to receive it. Verse 11. I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground. Nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. Verse 12. And all the nations will call you blessed. For you will, be delight, you will be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. Amen. 
What we learn from these texts basically is found when we look at John chapter 3, verse 16, is that the very same God who gave his all in the form of his son, Jesus Christ, is also the very same God who's saying to us today, try me and see. Do this and try me and see if I will not do it for you. If I was able to empty out all of heaven in the form of my son, Jesus Christ, so that you can be saved, how much more taking care of the matters that pertain to your life here on earth, the small matters of how you will be fed, how you will be clothed, how you will be, will be nourished, all those things are small to God if he's able to do even greater things with regards to giving his son to save your soul. So he's saying to us this morning, try me and see. See. Just test me and see. Amen. Amen. Shall we all kneel as we pray? Let's pray. Again, dear Jesus, for this message that you have given us this morning, Father. You have told us that, Father, you are faithful even though we remain unfaithful to you every day. You have shown us, Father, this morning that you have done great things for us, and not because, Father, you need to prove yourself to us, but you have done it, Lord God, so that you can give us assurance this morning that, Lord God, when we hand our all to you, that you will be able to replenish it tenfold, dear Father. I pray for your church, Lord God, this morning that, Lord God, you may minister to each and every one of our hearts and encourage us, dear Jesus, to trust in you. Giving our offering, dear Father, is not a matter of just exchanging money, but as Father, it's an expression, Lord God, of our gratitude and our trust in you, dear Jesus. And so we ask, Father, that you may teach us this morning, minister to our hearts as the, 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 the containers go around, dear Father, the vessels go around for us to put our offerings in, dear Father, I pray that your spirit may minister to our souls, that we may give to your storehouse, Lord God. All this we ask, believing, Father, that you'll always hear us when we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Let's change it to let's change it to number two one one. Number two one one. See as I easy who see so ye so easy ten be so Guya go vela umu Usa no tando gum sindi si Easy pussy so Easy pussy so say to Who ya see wella umu Usa si tela is pussy so Zieza is ibusi so so tolim vuselelo amen pezu wenta baniye heza izulu seliana hi So he sibusi so ze tu u ya si wela umbu u sa si tela is busi so si esa is busi so Masis wegitin kosi Kualisa izi tembi So kosi usi kini se Showers of blessings Showers of blessings we need. Mercy for on us are for holy, but for the showers we need. There 
shall be blessed of blessings all oh, that today may made for now as to God we confess now as on Jesus we call showers of blessings showers of blessings we need mercy drawn round us our fall holy Shall we pray? Thank you, dear Jesus, for answering our prayer, dear Father. We pray, Lord God, that you may bless what we have given, Father, and increase it abundantly. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I greet the church in the wonderful name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God is good. All the time. And all the time. This is the time for a special prayer for you and me, your family, and your community after we have spent a long week. Our scripture reading this morning, we are getting it from the book of Mark, chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. It reads, Then a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved son, in whom I am pleased. Now, 30 years after the birth of Jesus Christ, the angel of God hovered around the scene where he was baptized. And the Holy Spirit descended from heaven in the form of a dove and rested on him. And as the people were watching, a voice from heaven came down. And this is the voice and the ways that we have read from the book of Mark, chapter 1, verse 11, where the voice said, you are my beloved son in whom I am believed. I am well pleased. So this is Jesus that we are talking about, who is the Savior. This is the one who actually was born in a stable and was cradled in the manger. The Son of God who came down to heaven who came down from heaven to earth just for your redemption and my redemption so that me and you, we can have peace. Me and you, we can have happiness. Moreover, we can have everlasting life. Now, what we need to understand here is that John, John the Baptist, he was certain that the one who came to him for baptism was Jesus Christ. He was certain about that. And John was certain about that because God had promised him that he's going to give him a sign in which John will know who the Lamb of God was. And this is happening at this moment. So John recognized the voice that was coming from heaven to say this is the voice that is coming from heaven and this is a confirmation of what the Lord has spoken to me about to say there will be a Lord, a Lamb of God who is going to take away the sin of everyone who is in this world. And 
he saw that when the, uh, the glory of God was shining again on Jesus. Now, the question that I have this morning without a waste of time is that knowing that we have God promises, do we know the promise that God has got for us? Do you know the promise that God has got for you? Now, if you know the promise, ask yourself, do you recognize the sign of those promises as God is fulfilling the promise in your daily life? Because I know God is fulfilling that promise. Are you able to recognize that voice are you able to recognize that sign that God is showing you? Or you keep on complaining to say, God, this is I want. God, this is I need. God, you have promised. Without you even recognizing that this time God is speaking to me. Without you recognize that this is really the hand of God that is covering me. It is my prayer today that we can be able to understand those promises that God has got for us. It is my prayer today that we can be able to really see that this, uh, this is actually the hand of the Lord. You know, when Jesus Christ was here on earth, he spent 40 days in the wilderness. He spent 40 days in the wilderness and the devil took the opportunity he took the opportunity, the advantage of that unpleasant moment that Jesus Christ was at the end of his fasting. And then he offered him a lot of things. And listen to what Jesus had said. He said, as he answered, it is written. He mentioned that it is written that men shall not live on bread only, but through the words that come from God. He said, it is written that you shall not tempt your way, uh, the Lord your God. And he mentioned very clear to the devil to say, the devil, I know who you are. It is written that you shall not worship any other God than me. Now, it is a question that we need to meditate upon to say, as we are praying right now, as the devil has been throughout the week, the years, trying to take advantage of your situation at school, your situation at work, your situation in the family, your situation in, in, in the community. What is it that you are telling the devil? Are you able to remember what is written? Are you able to remember what God has promised? At this point in time, we know very well that God has got a promise for us, and he is ready to show us that sign. Actually, he has been showing us those signs. Let us pray at this point in time to be able to ask God to enable us to be able to put grounds on the word of God. Help us that when we know the word of God, let us not just know the word of God. Let us use the word of God as our sword, as our weapon, our weapon to be able to say, Satan, I know you, but I'm not going to take your part. I'm not going to party with you. I will celebrate with my Lord because it is written, for I have seen the hand of the Lord. I'm requesting the church right now to kneel down as we are going to praise the Lord for the promises that he has given us, for the sign that he daily show us, for allowing us, we are going to also ask him to help us to recognize this voice so that we can be able to choose what is right from all the things that are happening in our lives. We will kneel down as we pray. Our, daily, our dear Heavenly Father, we come to your throne humbly. Lord, you are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy to be praised. 
Glory be to your name. We praise you, Lord, for your loving kindness. We praise you, Lord, for your unfailing care. We praise you, Lord, for you who you are. We praise you, Lord, for giving us strength and upholding that which is weakness. We thank you, Lord, that even when we fall, you do not forsake us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that when we come to you, God, even after falling, you continue to cling to us. We thank you, Lord, that when we come to you and asking you for the forgiveness of our sin, you take them away and put it, throw them in the sea and never remember them anymore. At this point in time, God, we are here as Kempton Park Church. There are so many things that we can talk about as individual. But we thank you, God, that you are always there for us. We thank you, Father, for the leadership that we have here at church because you have appointed them so that they can lead us spiritually. Because you have appointed them so that where we fall, where we are weak, they can show us, they can direct us, God. We thank you, Father, for the children that you have given us, the children that are also teaching us as parents, because there are so many things that we learn from them. We thank you, God, that you have given life. We thank you, Lord, that where we fail you as parents, God, you are taking over. Dear Lord, we thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ. We thank you for the one who has died for us so that we can see your kingdom, so that we do not fail forever, so that we are not captured by the devil. Dear Father, at this point in time, we know that you have the healing power. There is someone in this church at this point in time who has left someone at home who is sick, there is someone who is sick at this point in time. There is someone whose prayer, whose heart is on his loved one because the loved one is in the hospital. The loved one is at home sick. The loved one is going through a lot in terms of the body, but you are the physician, you are the healer. And we thank you that your healing power is taking part at this point in time. We thank you that those who are sick at this point in time, they see the difference and they will glorify you. Father, there is someone here who is looking for employment. God, every good thing comes from you, God. And we believe that at the right time, the right thing will happen. Blessings will come. Blessing will fall to those that you have promised that you, the blessing will fall to. We are asking you, God, for your promises. There are so many promises that we have that comes from you. And we believe those promises. Oh, dear Father, many a times you fulfill your promises, but we do not even realize that. Many a time, when you have fulfilled those promises, God, we become different people. We forget that we once requested, we once cried, we once pleaded from you. Forgive us, Lord, for doing that. And going forward, help us to always remember. Because if we remember that, we will call your name and people will glorify you. We will bring testimonies to people because people will glorify you and know. Help us, God, to be able to see those signs because the signs are there, but our eyes are blind. Help us in a special way to be, to be able to have the ears that can understand and differentiate the heart that is open for your word to dwell in us, your voice to be heard by our ears. We pray for our preacher this morning. You have chosen your preacher. There is a reason that you have chosen the preacher. And through him, you are going to talk to us. We are thirsty for your weight, and we are asking you, God, that you chase away the evil spirit in this church at this moment, for you cannot tolerate to be with them. And here, God, we are 
pleading for the Holy Spirit. We are pleading that for your angels to be surrounding each and everyone who is here so that there is no room for that which is evil in this church. It's just few hours, God, we are pleading with you. We thank you that you have given us this Sabbath. May everything happens, God, according to your name, and we thank you. May your name be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. It's time for the children's story. As the children are coming up, let's sing a song for them. Morning, my friends. Morning. Uh, tell you what, um, I see everyone looks kind of gloomy today. I'm going to do an exercise. So today, our story, né? we are going to include our parents as well, okay? 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 Yes. Good morning. Good morning. How y'all doing? Good. Are y'all good? Yes. Let me see some smiles. Okay. But before we do that, we'll ask... Um, and here to, to pray for us. Ne? We'll all bow our heads and pray. Dear God, we thank you for the sermon we're about to have. Help us to listen and to understand. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. So since this is a sermon, how many of us brought our Bibles? <coughs> Let me see the Bibles. Okay, I want us to open Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter Chapter what? Chapter 4, verse 13, okay? But there's an exercise that I want all of us to do, including the adults, okay? Chapter 4, verse 13. Gold, can you come here? Let's show them our greeting, ne? Okay, so... What gold and I will show you is a greeting. Now, this greeting, I want everyone, uh, everyone to do it after, after, as soon after we read the verse, okay? Oh, yes? Okay, let's roll. Did you get that? Yeah. Let's do that again. Did you get that? Okay. So, Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, it says, let's read all I can do all things. How many things? All. How many things? All. all things. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Okay? Maybe let's do this. Let's all stand up. Let's read it all standing up. Everyone, let's stand up. So you turn to the person next to you. And we are reciting the verse. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Shall we try that again? I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Okay, let's sit down. So every time when that verse is read, even if it's an invited pastor, just stand up and do it. Ne? That's, that's the way we're going to remember this verse. So let me tell you a story. It's a story that has been told before. I heard it somewhere, uh, and I've never forgotten. It was years ago. So a certain man, 
uh, what name shall we give him? Simon. Simon. Okay. <laughs> so a certain man called Simon owned a bookstore. Okay. A what? Bookstore. What happens in a bookstore? There's a lot of books you can read, yes? They sell books. They sell books, okay, perfect. So they sold books, Simon sold books, okay? So now he had all the kind of books that you think, think of uh, when God said, remember, um, uh, great controversy, and obviously the Bible. Né? So now what happened was that all the other books were getting sold quite quick, but now the Bible kept on piling because suppliers would always bring the Bible and people were not buying the Bible. So Simon thought to himself, hmm, let me, let me put up an ad, an advert that says there's a job opening. Né? I need someone who can sell what? Bible. Who can sell Bibles. So he writes and puts it in the newspaper, puts it in the TV, says if you know that you're good at selling, Please come and I will interview you, okay? So now, um, a lot of people came. Uh, some people came and they had their masters in cells and whatsoever. They had their doctorate in cells. So he would give them the Bible and say, look, I'll give you five books for now and go and sell them for me. A lot of them would come and they'll go out and they'll go and come back and they still have the five Bibles. They could not sell them, okay? Then came this one man. This man... Do you know what a stammerer is? No. Do you know what was a stammerer? A stammer is the person who doesn't talk nicely. He always goes, ah, ah. Okay. Um, you have a night. Yes, you have a point. I don't know about who doesn't talk nicely. Um, but yes, he's very right. A stammerer is someone who, 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 that kind of, that person, eh? So this person comes in and says, I want to, 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 to sell the, 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 the books. And obviously, Simon looks at him and says, there's no way this person can sell because he stammers. Are you getting it? The person says, no, but I... To sell books. And Simon just said, okay, since you're bothering me, let me give you five. He gives a, he gives a gentleman. What, what should we call a gentleman? What, what's his name? Simon. No, but Simon is the one who sells. Max. Okay, we'll say Max. So Max gets the five Bibles né? as a test, like everyone else. So Max goes out. After 10 minutes, guess what? Max comes back and says, I want more books because they are sold. Here's your money. Yeah? And like, Simon is like, wow, how does that happen? Then he's like, no, maybe this was a chance. He gives him another 10. After 30 minutes, Max comes back and says, I want more books. Yeah? And he got another, another set of books. After an hour, he had sold over 60 books. So Simon, he comes back and Simon asks him, so Max, how, how, how are you selling these books? I don't understand because they've been piling and you're the only one who's been able to sell them. Do you know what, what Max says? What do you think Max said? <laughs> okay, so Max, Max responds, he says, I, 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 I knock at the door and I, 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 I ask one question. I, I say what do you 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 choose either you 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 buy the book or I read it to you. What would you choose? I'll choose I'll 
rather buy the book. Amen. So, so, so here's the moral of the story. Here's, here's the moral of the story. Here's the moral of the story. Sometimes people look at you and they think you're too small. Sometimes people think, look at you and they don't think you're very smart. They think there are certain things that you can't do. But this is what I say. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Okay, who's going to pray for us today? Let us pray. Our dear Holy Father, can you please help us to be kind, to be, to be, to be respecting our parents, to be good, to be helpful, to be, to be praying to others who are in hospital. Help the people who are in hospital tonight to walk nicely, to to give, to help, to have a lot of money, to have good things, to have good clothes, to have good everything help us help the good the 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 bad people to worship you and read and and help you to be to be the 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 time to 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 make them uh the word of god to say oh dear god you're my you are my friend and god please help us to be you to be good and worship you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 Story, yes, we do. Thank you, thank you, yes, we do. So don't forget to come again to the story. Uh, allow me to take this time to introduce the people who are saving us today. Um, the children's story was told by uh, Tandolenko Sisbanda. What does the church say? Uh, the deacons who are saving us, uh, Brother Joshua uh, Chanda, yes, known as Josh. What does the church say? Amen. And uh, Sister uh, Sister Ukoko Otintiwe uh, is uh, another deacon is uh, serving us. Um, oh, Mrs. Mema led us in prayer. What does the church say? Amen. And then uh, oh, Mrs. Unene. Uh, gave us the official reading. What does the church say? Amen. Uh, Mina, uh, I'm Ian Gulube. What does the church say? Amen. I'm your MC. Yes. Um, to introduce the speaker, uh, the speaker is Obabu uh, Kolani Jovu. What does the church say? Amen. We are going to give him a resounding amen after the second song. For the second song, let's arise and make use of hymn number 201. Number 201, let's stand, let's stand, let's stand. Nothing is any here. Sange to Zinclo, Sange to Zinclo, says he can't jail fatu. Sange to Zinclo, says he can't jail Nangi so no sa, Mizingi, Gilisa, Yame, Mizinko, Singi so, Tangani, Esi, Sayangi, Vega, Engo, 
Penisonke Banki Pota Kenobi Shayonga Niklini Saetwale Niwa Fagingo Magimi Namsha Hallelujah, Yangi Pionet, Lene, to say why, oh, Sima Mala, Pongi, say, Benjalo, no Magunjani, Gungeti, Yagi, no Musa, why, oh, Jesus, Wanki Fota Kenobi Shayo Wangi Kini Saetwale Ni Yenawa Fakingo Makimi Nam Sham Yogu Fula Hallelujah Yangi pingo me jayogu to me sa ubu sugune miningo evola ku kri kri minti se yone chabulongi ponum shengi wa menjalo jalo. Wanki pota kenobi sha yo Wangi kini sa etwale ni wa fagingo magin mi nam sha yogu fula hallelujah yogu kini Oh ya singo wa wazamina hengwenze leo ba se vonge wa kuvone gamesho angi sinzindi se tuze na kute pate bele gunkulunkulu. Okay, amen. Wanki pota kenobi shayo wangi kini sa etwale ni yena wa fagingo magemi nam sha. the saints in the name of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Um, shall we open the book of Revelation chapter 3 verse 20. Sambulo sashugo se statu e vesi elamashumi amabili. When we find it, we shall say amen. 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 Behold, yes, sir. I stand at the door amen. and I knock. If any man hear my voice not the knock, the voice. If any man hear my voice and open the door, 
I will come in to him and will eat with him and he with me. It is not the knock that opens the door. It is the voice. Our title for today, Open the Door. Let's pray. My Father in heaven, this is your moment. Do what you do best. Amen. How many here have been an Adventist for 100 years? 100? 90? 8 years? 70? 60? 50? Ah, I was expecting that one day, but we'll not say. Amen, Mama. 40 years? Amen, Mama. 30? Hmm, we're quite a young church. 20? 10? 5? Amen? 4? 3 years? <laughs> 2 years? Amen? 1 year? Amen? Two weeks? No one? Okay. The reason for the question is this. <clears throat> it seems to me that in our Christian walk, we just walk and not take time to do what my Pathfinder say, check your step. Now, if you check your step, you can't check your step moving forward. Amen? Today's message is about that. Because at times it is difficult to move forward without looking back. And not knowing where you are at that particular moment in time. Amen. I've been an Adventist for 24 years. And boy, what a journey it has been. I have not seen it all, but my. But I was born with a talent to introspect and to be brutally critical of myself. Because I'm human and I make mistakes. And for me to move forward, I need to know where I am and why I am there. Now, last week we read about the seven churches. Amen? But I want us to relook at the seven churches. Not in a prophetic manner, but I want us to look at the seven churches as a Christian journey of an individual. Let's read chapter 2. Revelation. Sorry, chapter 1, verse 20. Chapter 1, verse 20. The mystery of the seven stars which you saw in my right hand and the seven gold, golden candlesticks and the seven stars. Oh, sorry, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. Am I reading, am I reading it right? So the seven stars are the seven angels. Of the churches. The seven candlesticks are the churches. Now if you re recall. When you go back to the beginning of chapter 1. What John saw. Was the seven churches. And amongst or in the midst of the seven churches. Was a lamb. And who is the lamb? Now at the beginning of the book. 
or rather of the message of the seven churches, Jesus is amongst his churches. Question. Why at the last church he says, I stand at the door? Meaning he is no longer inside the church. He is now standing at the door, outside. What happened? Did he choose to be out there? Or was he chased away? Because, I mean, how do you know Kim Zinwak? But he's knocking. Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. And this is a church. Yes, allowed to she, eh? I stand at the door and I knock. Now, if you read through all the messages of the seven churches, the church seems to be regressing. Instead of growing spiritually, it seems to be going down. Now, let's look at the church. Yes, a face. Great works. Mighty church. According to today's lesson, a white horse. Pure. Victorious. A conqueror. Mighty in the word and mighty in the works of God. But Jesus says, right there, you are losing your first love. Now, when I read this, I thought the reality of life is that the moment you are born, the process of dying begins. The moment you are born, the process of dying, could that be true spiritually? You are mighty. You've got all the works. You are conquering the world. But you have lost your first love. First signs of dying. Losing your first love. Now some of us are in the efficient phase of the church. As we sit here. Mighty works. Powerful preachers and singers and prayer warriors. But losing the first love. The message is, I stand at the door. While you're losing your love, I stand at the door and I knock. Simnia. This is found in Revelation 2, 9 and 10. We won't read it. You are suffering for my word. You are suffering. For the gospel. Eh? You are being persecuted. Yet. You tolerate evil. Some of us are there. Some of us are in the senior stage. We are being persecuted. All day. Yet we tolerate. Evil people. Are you following where I'm going? Pegamum. Simple. Spirit of compromise. Spirit of compromise. You come here every day. Every week you are here. Or maybe even not in Campton Park Central, but every Sabbath you are in church. But you are harboring a spirit of compromise. In small things. Sometimes in big things. But you are harboring a spirit of compromise. Jesus says, I stand at the door. While you are harboring that spirit and I knock. Something very strange about this church is that, or at this stage, it talks about Balaam. The man who could not curse God's church. Tried to curse 
Eh? He even experienced something very strange in his life. So a donkey talk. Because he was harboring a spirit of compromise. How can a heathen king ask you as a prophet of God to come and curse God's property? Spirit of compromise. Uh, ask this, my baby. Ask this. When you fail, you decide to employ one of the most evil strategies to destroy God's church. Set a trap for God's people. Since I cannot get them through a literal curse, I will open up a door for sexual immorality so that they curse themselves. What happened? Over 20,000 people died because of that. Mazalani, what I'm going to say is, I'm not judging. Um, it's just something as, as a preacher I must say. One of the biggest things that will make Adventists not to see heaven is sexual immorality. The devil knows he can never tempt me. Why? He knows I will not smoke. He can't tempt me. More alcohol. He can't tempt me. I can't do it. It's, I mean, it, it, it's not in my NDA. It's, it's not there. If it was, was <laughs> Sexual immorality. Because that is something in me. I'm human. And I've got this need. There is nothing wrong about being sexual. But when? And how? And with who? So, many of us are in this stage. Jesus says, I... Remember again, it's not the knock that is going to make you open the door. We are coming. It's not the knock that is going to I'll rather enable you to open the door. Uh, those who know me know I don't preach like this, but I, I just decided to be soft today because this message for me, it was very difficult to... I was saying to my wife yesterday, or even this morning, I don't know how I'm going to deliver this. But here, let God lead. Tartaria. This is Revelation 2, verse 19 to 25. Now, where Jesus used to sit in the church, there is now Jezebel. There is now Jezebel. Remember, the graph is going. Now, who is Jezebel? I once had a sermon a few weeks ago. The preacher says, there are a number of times when Israelites, rather, when women from Syria walked into Jerusalem, curses followed. He was talking about Jesus saying to his disciples, let's cross over. Eh? Let's go and rest. And they went to Syria. Where he met a woman whose child was sick. Now he was talking about um, the three times when people said to Jesus, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Right? I'm just summarizing his sermon. Now he says, Jesus knew that if they do, he knew that the woman is coming to see him. He knew if this woman crosses over here, there will be trouble. One of those times was when Ahab crossed over and took a wife from that side and brought her this side. And hell break, broke loose. That woman was Jezebel. So Jesus, is, Jesus crossed over to meet the woman where she is from. 
And the woman says, Jesus, son of David. And that is because David hated three types of people. He hated blind people. There's a reason for that. Uh, somebody preached this sermon here. Because I've seen a vision that the kingdom of God, of, 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 of Israel, must be ruled from Jerusalem. At that time, it was owned by them. And the king, I won't give it to you. And even if you decide to class I will send women, I will send the lame, abakuba zegile, and the blind, and they will kill you. And David did not like these people. Now, but in his lifetime, David could only forgive the lame. Do you know who that was? Mephibosheth. But he did not have time to get to the blind and to the woman. That is why the man sits at Tuzukumkwak, or Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me, whose name was? Bartholomew, eh? But me, a blind man. I'm to listen. Shh, 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 shh. Ah, ah, ah. Prophecy must be fulfilled. Right? Now, but the point I'm trying to make is this. Where Jesus now in his churches, this is now in Tyatira. At the seat of Jesus, now Jezebel sits there. Remember, you harbored the spirit of compromise and you became sexually immoral. Once you are sexually immoral, Jezebel rules over you. By the way, somewhere after these chapters, in this book, a name Jezebel is named. Revelation 17. Amen? Some of us sitting here are in Tatira stage. Now we go to Sadis. Hey, this one. The message to the church of Sardis is found in Revelation 3, verse 1 to 3. We're not going to read this because we read it the whole of last week. It says, you have a reputation to be alive, but you are dead. I used to have a teacher from the high school. Um, he would say, Hey, and begin my daughter, we impef mul, go to get a peel, I can take feel. Sometimes in our Christian experience, we look to be alive, but we are dead. We have a reputation to be alive, yet we are dead. I've been there. I've been there. I've been there. Trust me. I've been there. Babonu mte ngene ngu unzwe ne sale tuul. Ema pambila tuuli special item. Hayu ya pilu nlof. Andu nlofu file. In that very death of yours, Jesus says, I stand at the door and I knock. It's something else to have a reputation and to have the real thing. Because the reputation is just that, the reputation. Philadelphia, chapter 3. Verse 8 to 11, for the sake of those who are writing. Hey. Because now you have reached a stage where you only have your reputation left as a Christian. Philadelphia, you have little power. You have little power. But there's something good about the Philadelphia stage in that little power of yours. You keep my word. You keep 
my word. Why am I saying all of these things, Bazalwan? I meet his friends and his family, but am I, am, am I still part of that family? Is he still my friend? Is he still my king? And I read this verse, Revelation 3.20. Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. Now, what is it that will enable us to open the door? What will enable us to open the door is to understand and know who is it that is knocking at the door. Let's unpack him. Revelation 3.14. These things saith the Amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of God's creation. That is who is knocking. He says, I am Amen. Eh? I am the faithful witness. As he knocks, he's shouting these things. I am amen. I am the faithful witness. I am the beginning of the creation of God. Open the door. Revelation 3, 7. These things said he that is holy, that is true, and he that has the key of David. He that opens and no one can close. And he that closes and no one can open. While he's knocking, he's saying these things to you. Wherever, whether you're in Ephesus stage, whether you're in Tyatira, whether you are in Pegamos, he says, I am he that is true. Open the door. These things, chapter 3, verse 1. These things save he that has the seven spirits of God. I will not give you one. I will give you seven. To wake you up from your slumber. Open the door. Chapter 2, sorry, verse 8. These things, chapter 2, verse 1, saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the golden candlesticks. Did you see what we did, what we did right there? We started at the back. Because he says, I want to come back and be in your inside. I want to be in your midst. Open the door. I want to be with you where we began. Amen. I will never forget October 5, 1996. That was the day I was baptized. One of the most wonderful experiences of my life. Jesus says, I want me and you to go back there. Would you open the door? Would you? Open the door. Because when you open the door, I will come in. And you will sit with me on my throne. Like I sat with my father on his throne. So, Bazalwan, the long and short of what I'm saying is, it doesn't matter where you are right now in your spiritual journey. Jesus still wants to save you. Jesus still wants to take care of you. Comes a time, Bazalwani Lakona, Uibona, Ungase Lutu. You know, Kubesangas, which Abazorani can see through you. Kuleso Simoles, Uchesuti, open the door. I want to save you. I want to eat with you. Because Ujesu did not come here to die for nothing. He came to die and save you from wherever you are. You must put city of Vangala City. Find them where they are, hang it? No Jesu Njalok. He wants us, he wants to find us where we are. So Bazalana, my message today is just simple. Open 
that door. Amen. Amen. In closing, in closing, we'll make use of hymn number 213. May the church stand. Let's, let's do number two, one, three. Jesus, send this to me. Two. Jesus, send this to me. Oh, yeah. Come on, me. Oh, oh, oh. Send this to me. Oh, see. Pambi guake uopumula 
uchabule ninda onye wola nawe nawe naye open the door please bazalwan because usezo qeda usincengela masinyano nensila uzohlale nensila let us pray our gracious father in heaven we thank you for your word indeed ngosi we are in different experiences of this christian walk in joba stwele line but you are saying to us today no matter where we are you still knocking at the door you still bleeding because in course the fact that we are inside here does not mean that the devil cannot catch us but siyakubonga nkosi ukuthi uyasibekezelela kose namandla sicelo usipha amandla ke baba ukuthi singajajane kodwa sikhuzane sikhulisane kose namandla using your word because it is only your word that gives life bosi somunye nomunye ke nkosi phathi kwale ndlu kusuka komncane kuye komdala and shelter them and keep knocking because be persistent until songesi uvula umnyango because we need life we need eternal life because without you we are as good as dead selekelele ngosiyam bosi sabaholi baleli bandla kulungulolungileyo as they guide us through the year kose namandla the messages that they prepare and the programs that they prepare may they be the persistent knock ngulungulolungileyo in our hearts until we open this is our prayer in that mighty and powerful name